Okay, I want, just wanted to do a quick talk about outside children. You know, the, the children that daddy just may not have told you about that was outside the current marriage or the current family. And um, this is something that is reality nowadays, especially with uh, not only just the fact that you have blended uh, families, so you may have half brothers, half sisters, or, or step step brothers, step sisters, and other families and things of that nature. But you know, folks uh, are fornicating more than ever and doing things that they shouldn't do. So these types of situations sometimes pop up. Unfortunately, you hate to find out about it at your parents' funeral uh, about your brother or your sister that you didn't know about, but. Just wanted to talk about it a little bit because the Bible has a, a little bit to say about it, actually. Um, in the book of Judges, the 11th chapter, the very first verse, we're introduced to a guy named Jephthah. And Jephthah uh, was a guy who was sort of considered an outside child. Judges 11.1 1 says, Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot, and Gilead begat Jephthah. And then it goes on to say, and Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. That's the very second verse of Judges 11. Now, the, the thing about it is, is that, and the, the Bible teaches this, is that let's say that uh, you, you have a family and then you find out later, unfortunately, through funeral or something like that, that your dad or your mom had children that you didn't know about. The children that are outside that particular family, it's not their fault. They didn't ask to come into the world. They didn't ask for mom and dad to fornicate or commit adultery or anything like, of that nature. So as a child of God, you should never blame or be mad at the children who were born as the result of, of anything, basically, because nobody asked to come into the world. Just things just happen. So the children are really just totally innocent of that. And so you should treat those children with dignity and respect, even though they may be considered, quote unquote, outside children. But you still need to, to treat them right because they didn't ask to come into the world. They didn't ask to be in the situation that they're in. And you really should uh, treat them based upon their own merit. Uh, that outside child may actually be someone who will wind up being a blessing to you in the long run. If you go around uh, treating people wrong who have not wronged you, God can fix it where the day may come where the, the person that you made your enemy, God will fix it where that enemy will be the one who will have to, to, to be a blessing back to you. God will put that enemy in your life to where you need that enemy in order to, to get by. You know, you'd hate to go through life uh, being mad at a half-brother you didn't know about for no reason, and then later on in life, you're in the nursing home and, and your half brother that you dogged out is the only one who will come by and visit you because your own kids won't visit you. You know, so God can fix it to, to where things can turn around, especially if that outside child didn't do anything to you. I mean, and this goes for anybody. If someone hasn't treated you wrong, and even if they do treat you wrong, Jesus said to love your enemies and to hate those that despitefully use you. So uh, really when it comes to enemies as well as friends, you're supposed to treat everybody with some level of dignity. But don't just go around dogging people out just because they're the product of something that was wicked. All right. Uh, this is what the Bible says. The Bible even says that all children count. If you look at Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, the 15th through the 17th verse, it says this. If a man have two wives, one beloved and one another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So what is all that saying there in Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, and starting at the 15th verse, is basically saying that the man have a, a wife, he has a child by her, and then he don't like that wife, he gets him a second wife and have children by by that second wife. 
he can't give all his stuff to the kids of his second wife. He's obligated to give a double portion to the son of that first wife, even if he didn't like that first wife. Now, you may say, well, that's just the rules given to the children of Israel. That doesn't apply to the to the new local, you know, the local New Testament church that that was Israeli or, or Hebrew law. That's not Christian law or church law today. The same principles still apply because you're dealing with the same God, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament. All right. But going back to the story of uh, of Jephthah in Judges 11, uh, I made a mention that, you know, if you dog somebody out who didn't do anything to you, they got to fix it to where you need them. Check out what happens in the sixth and seventh verses of Judges 11, going back to Jephthah. And it says, and they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye coming to me now when ye are in distress? Okay, so what happened is, is that right after um, the uh, the other kids uh, put Jephthah out of the house and Jephthah had to, to make his own way, God was still with him. God still blessed him. But what happened was that uh, an enemy came and was going to uh, destroy the people uh, in that region. And they knew that Jephthah knew how to fight, and they knew, they also figured out that God was probably with Jephthah, and then they wanted Jephthah to come help them. Well, Jephthah said, oh, okay, so back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You're all on me. He said, now you want my help. But back then, you were you were kicking me out of the house. You didn't think to anything of me. So God has a way of bringing people back into your life whom you may have dogged out. So you need to be really careful, especially if it's a situation where the people that you're dealing with were not at fault. Like I said, the children, children can't control who, who they're born of in terms of their families. They don't get to choose their parents. And so every man has to stand on his own merit. Now we know that God was with Jephthah because if you look in Judges, the 11th chapter, the 29th verse, it says, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. He passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed over Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. And, of course, if you read that entire chapter and, and, and thereafter, you'll see that under the leadership of Jephthah, they were able to defeat the enemy. It really, it was, it was God, but God was using Jephthah in order to give the people of that town the victory. But you see... It was an, uh, a, a situation where Jephthah's half-brothers and half-sisters or th that family had to eat some crow. And they had to humble themselves and say, hey, we need your help, even though they were the ones that initially had uh, expelled them from their father's house. So God will fix it where the ones that you treat wrong will be the ones that have to take care of you if you're not careful. And we see this again in the very last chapter of the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, the 50th chapter. Joseph, who was dogged out by his uh, at least 10 of his half brothers, he had a younger brother named Benjamin, who who was his whole brother. But all of his all of Joseph's half brothers dogged him out and threw him in a well, sold him into slavery. And it was Joseph, when it was all said and done, who wound up saving the entire family in Genesis 50, uh, 50 chapter 20 verse. Joseph says this, but as for you. Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So Joseph right here, even though he had been dogged out his whole, you know, and sold into slavery and was had hard times as a result of his half brothers treating him wrong. They were jealous of him and envious of him. God fixed the where he was the main one that had to take care of them, and he wound up saving them. So um, I just wanted to share this uh, quick message with you real quick that uh, outside children or children that uh, you may have uh, uh, that you uh, may hear about in families, it may not be your family, maybe other families, people have some outside children and then you don't hear anything about it until the funeral comes up. Um, as long as that individual is uh, is seeking the Lord or is, is at least, you know, uh, some 
type of upstanding citizen treating you right, just just treat them with respect. Don't dog them out just because they remind you of something that your parents did, some wickedness that your parents did. That was on your parents. And even then, the, you know, Jesus tells you to honor your mother and father. Even then, you shouldn't be... Um, to the point where you disrespect your parents, uh, I'm sure your parents realized they did wrong if they had some outside child or, or something of that nature. But the, the key to all of this is is not to take out your hate or your frustration upon uh, the the children who had nothing to do with the situation that they're in. So I hope that the, this uh, short lesson uh, will help someone, and you can always turn to the King James Bible for your answers.